New Jersey's rich legacy of military heroism was written by the ordinary men and women of the Garden State who made extraordinary sacrifices to defend the principles in which they believed. There was the young cadet from Ridgewood who became an ace pilot and earned a Medal of Honor. An ordinary telephone operator from Passaic whose service was called indispensable. A slave from Colts Neck who found his independence by fighting against Americas. A daughter of Trenton whose legend has endured for more than two centuries and an African-American common seaman who was anything but common. The Medal of Honor is the highest decoration awarded by the U.S. military, and it recognizes valor above and beyond the call of duty. Only 19 people have earned two Medals of Honor. Navy Seaman Robert Augustus Sweeney is one of them. Sweeney earned his medals in 1881 and 1883 by risking his life to save others. In both cases, he dove into stormy seas to rescue shipmates who had fallen overboard. Sweeney is the only New Jerseyan to earn two Medals of Honor and the only African American to do it. Ridgewood native Thomas McGuire became one of the most prolific aces of the Second World War. Only a year after graduating Air Cadet School, he shot down five enemy planes in one battle over New Guinea in 1943. A year later, he splashed seven more during the Battle of the Philippines. In all, he was credited with downing 38 enemy planes, the second highest total of the war. On January 7, 1945, McGuire was killed in action while leading a combat mission over the Philippines. McGuire was posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor to go with his Distinguished Flying Cross, Distinguished Service Cross, Purple Heart, and three Silver Stars. He is remembered in New Jersey by the airbase that bears his name. Grace Banker of Passaic never imagined her skills as a telephone operator would take her to the frontline battlefields of World War I. But when America entered the war in 1917, a top priority was establishing dependable communications. Banker was chosen to lead a group of phone operators who became known as the Hello Girls. The Hello Girls served in frontline trenches, their gas masks and helmets never more than an arm's length away. They took calls and relayed crucial messages to commanders, all the while exposing themselves to the same dangers as the troops they supported. For her leadership, Grace Banker was awarded the Distinguished Service Medal. Despite the fact senior military officers called them indispensable, when the war ended, the Hello Girls were categorized as civilian volunteers, and it was not until 1977 that Congress recognized them as military veterans. Unfortunately, Grace Banker had died 17 years earlier. Titus Cornelius was born a slave in Colts Neck in 1753. Two decades later, when the American Revolution broke out, the royal governor of Virginia decreed that slaves who escaped their masters and fought for the crown would immediately be granted freedom. Cornelius escaped and enthusiastically joined the Redcoats where his heroism in battle caught the eye of British officers. Cornelius was given an honorary rank of colonel and command of a group of former slaves called the Black Brigade. Under his dynamic leadership, the Black Brigade ravaged central New Jersey. They burned homes, routed troops, took hundreds of prisoners and confiscated food, weapons, and horses. They especially targeted slave-owning households. By 1780, the man now known as Colonel Ty had become a ruthless and effective military leader. New Jerseyans feared the Black Brigade more than they did the regular British Army. The story of Colonel Ty ended in Tom's River when he was shot during a raid in 1780. The wound became infected and he died soon after. While Titus Cornelius was a real figure of the American Revolution lost to history, another New Jerseyan of that era who was probably more legend than fact endures to this day. The legend of Molly Pitcher says she was bringing water to American soldiers who were fighting the Battle of Monmouth when she saw her husband fall wounded. Without hesitating, Molly took his place in the artillery line and helped keep the cannons firing. Historians were never fully sold on the story, but it may be more than legend. Trenton's Mary Ludwig was married to a man named William Hayes, a soldier in the colonial army. Like many 18th century wives, Mary marched with her husband and she was with him when the Battle of Monmouth erupted. Another soldier who survived the battle wrote in his diary of a woman who bravely replaced her wounded husband on the artillery line. The soldier described how at one point during the height of the battle, an enemy cannonball landed at her feet but did no more than rip her petticoat. Well, she cried out, that could have been a lot worse. Whether true or not, the story of Molly Pitcher is an enduring symbol of the sacrifices made by women in the cause of American independence, and these five ordinary New Jersey citizens remain an extraordinary symbol of honor and sacrifice.